Good morning, friends. Friends in the house and friends online, welcome. Good morning, my name is Gus, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to church this morning. My Bible says that where two or more are gathered in his name, he's present there as well. So let me just do a quick count. One, two, we're good. We are good. You have some faith in you today? That section does. You have some faith in you today? All right, let's get up if you can. Let's put our hands together. Lord, we welcome you in our midst today. We thank you for all that you have for us today. And we are here to worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Lord, you're welcome.
together for our good and for your glory, Lord. So we glorify you. We choose joy in this place. We choose faith. We choose to magnify your name, to lift up your name, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. You are worthy of our praise, Lord God. Come, Lord.
take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it for good. Today's story is a giant challenge. It's based on 1 Samuel 17. A few years later, the Philistines collect their forces for an attack against Israel. Saul masses his army against them, and David's three oldest brothers join the king's forces. One evening, David comes in from the fields to find his father busy packing food. His father says, this is for your brothers. I want you to take it to them. David says, I'll leave right away. The not good news to this, a giant is fighting for the Philistines. All the Israelites are scared of him, including King Saul. David wonders what's going on. The giant says, why do you bother lining up for battle? Just send out a man who dares to fight me. If he kills me, then the Philistines will all be put down their weapons and be your servants but if I kill him, you will be our servants. David asks, who is this unclean Philistine that, want, that thinks he can defy the army of God? A soldier says, that's Goliath. Then David says, Father sent me here with food for you, and I'm not the one mouthing off. This, this Philistine is insulting our God. One of the brothers says, you're just a spoiled kid who wants to watch a battle of your own for your own fun. David says, no, I just hate this, to see our God disrespected. I'll fight the giant. A soldier says, O oh, king, there is one person who will fight, but the king says, bring him here at once. David says, I can't wear this. I'm not used to fighting in armor. Besides, my plan is not to defend myself, but to attack. I don't need armor, just some stones for my sling.
With only a shepherd's staff and a sling, David goes out to meet the Philistine giant. The armies of both camps watch their champions as they face each other. But Goliath says, do you think I'm a dog that you can chase away with sticks and stones? David says, you come with a sword, a spear, and a shield, but I come in the name of God who will give me the victory. The giant laughs, but David whirls his sling, takes careful aim, and let think and lets the stone fly. <laughs> David. <laughs> David has slain Goliath with a single shot from his sling. David says, let everyone know that our God does not need human weapons. This battle is the Lord's, and he has delivered the Philistines to us. Please stand and sing for awesome God. Time for Sunday school, all the children can meet us in the foyer. Good morning, LGT family and friends. And a quick shout out to my mom who is just doing so amazingly well with her recovery. God is wonderful as today's scripture tells us. It is from Psalm 147 verses one to five. And it says, praise the Lord. For it is good to sing praises to our God. For it is pleasant and praise is beautiful. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers together the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars. He calls them by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. Hello church, here are your announcements this week. Pastor Kathy's Active Ladies Bible Study will be meeting this Wednesday, May 25th at 10 a.m. and they will be meeting every other week for the months of June and July. If you're here in person today and newer to the church, we have kids programs happening during the sermon. Kids ages two to three can head to Vivi's Clubhouse. It's behind the family zone in the sanctuary and in a room down the hall there. Infants and kids ages 4 to 10 can head downstairs for their programs and junior highs and junior youth from grades 6 to 9 can head downstairs to room 115 for their program. Did you know that Pastor Bob sends out daily devotionals by email every day? If you would like to get these devotionals, you can sign up at our website, LondonGospelTemple.com. Click on the Contact Us tab at the top, and there you'll see the different emails that you can sign up for. If you click on Pastor Smith today, then you'll be able to sign up to get the daily devotionals. Our last announcement this morning is our ways to give. If you're here in person, we have the debit machine out in the foyer, as well as the give box where you can drop off cash or check. You can also give by e-transfer. Just use the email give at lgt.org. You can also give by credit card at our website, londongospeltemple.com slash give. Or you can send a check in the mail or drop it off during the week. But please enjoy the rest of the service. 
Well, why don't we stand just one more time? I looked out my window yesterday and saw all my lawn chairs blowing across the horizon with a metal pole and trees. Did you know that there's much of the city that still has no power? Most of the stoplights when I was driving in didn't work. Praise the Lord, I'm here today. And you're here today. And uh, we just, what on earth happened? That was unbelievable. But the Lord is with us, and uh, his mercies got us through this. I want to just pray before we start today. Um, there's one thing that we do want to do. But before we do that, could you just bow your heads with me? And uh, let's all bow our heads just for a second. There's some things that... Um, I want to just in our hearts reach out to the Lord for right now. Lord, we just pray for every person that's sick right now. Lord, there's some people that in the, connected to the church that, that have COVID. I just lift up everybody struggling with sickness, the stuff that goes around. I pray your healing for every person that needs it, <clears throat> for whatever the reason they need it. I just pray your every burden that we've brought here today would be gone in the name of Jesus. Lord, it's not just about a feeling bringing a burden, it's real. And God, I pray, Lord, there would be an entrance of your kingdom into not just our lives, but the spot at which we're at right now. Lord, we don't want to hit and miss. We want to, you hit right where we are right now. God, you have a word in season for each one of us. I pray we would sense how we fit in, Lord, to what you have for us, your plan. Lord, not based on our feelings, but based on your motives and your character, which is so concise what you have for us. I pray your blessing for each one, that there would be an understanding of our understanding. May it not be limited, but may we have an understanding of what you keep for us and have for us in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. You may be seated. I do want to take a moment and read the wedding bands uh, for a lovely, lovely couple, Laura Beltran and Sergio Fuentes. We got, I think, a picture here. storm, much of the city is actually out of power. I'm not sure if everybody that here would realize this. Uh, many of the homes, people texting me, no power as of uh, 15 minutes ago. And so I know a lot of people online, you'll be watching this later if the power comes back. And, uh, but we just pray the Lord's uh, protection over everybody with what's gone on. There is a verse in Genesis chapter 39, and it's in verse 20. And we've been looking at this topic of glory and how God mingles in our situations. And a way of kind of looking at our lives, I think a lot of times we have what we would think is an expense. Like, oh, this is like, if you have a balance sheet or an income statement, I mean, good grief, it's called inflation. And expenses, it's just like, how on earth is this so expensive? I mean, I'm carpooling now, and like, I mean, it's just like, what on earth is going on? And a lot of times we look at life's expenses, we can kind of, in our minds, look at situations and think, well, that's not, that's an expense, it's something I'm putting out, it's something I don't want to do for, not for the Lord, we often want to do things for the Lord, but we take life circumstances and kind of grade them and put them in columns. And many times we put columns in place that we fit things in that sh don't fit according to the Bible. And one of the things that we fit in is this thing that I'm going to just call what we would sometimes put as an expense. It's not. 
Genesis chapter 39, verse 20, we looked last week about God making a place awesome. Now, we often don't think of a place as awesome, but Jacob, with Jacob's ladder, one of the highlights was when verse 17 of the chapter we were reading last week, it said, and he was afraid when he saw this ladder and God talking to him and said, how awesome is this place? So God can fill your life and the blessing of Abraham, it's not just they got the promised land, they also received relationships. And so glory moved into a land, glory moved into relationships, and glory actually moved into a place. Glory also gave them promises. So Jacob, they hadn't received the land yet, but God built this ladder set up and Jacob's like, God is in this place. This place is awesome. And I grew up in California, and I, I mean, not to spend much time on it, but they, you meet the kids from down there, and they do talk. Like, dude, that's rad. They, like, that's how they talk. That's awesome. So, like, this is kind of slang, but here Jacob is like, this place is awesome. So God can make a relationship awesome. He can also make a place awesome. And he can make a promise come to pass. And the promise itself is pretty awesome. Now I want to show you Genesis 39, 20. We would fit this in the bad column. This is about this, this son of Jacob. So this guy that we're reading about now is the last week, the guy we were talking about, his kid. So Jacob, who became Israel, had these 12 boys. Genesis 39, verse 20 says, but while Joseph was there in the prison, so Joseph is one of the sons of Jacob. So here he is, he's in prison. And it says, the Lord was with him. Now what's interesting is, it says the Lord was with him. Not was going to be with him, but was with him. So it's staged a certain way. It didn't look like God made a promise that I'm going to be with you at some point, but I'm not with you in the prison. It says the Lord was with him in prison. And then here's this phrase, he showed him kindness. So I'm going to read this again. But while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. Now, that little phrase there, he showed him kindness, based on the grammar, because there's a comma after that, it's not just he showed him kindness by granting him favor with the warden, it's he showed him kindness, and on top of that, he granted him favor. And it's important to take that away from this verse. So here he is in prison, he didn't make his way there. He didn't do anything to deserve it. And in the prison, it says God showed him kindness and on top of that granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all that he had in the prison. And he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did, but he was in prison. And we would look at it and say, that's lame. How is that the blessing of God? That's an expense. That goes in the expense column. That's not something I, I want. I would want to figure out how to get out of there. God wanted uh, him in prison. I wouldn't say that. I, I don't know if the enemy put him there or whatever. But Jacob had a son named Joseph. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And many times we would look at that story and say, well, we want to turn around and we want him out of that prison. That's how success would look. But what's interesting is these two little phrases, the Lord was with him there, so he had done nothing wrong at all. And the Lord showed him kindness and then granted him favor. What on earth would God's kindness look like in that place? That's what it doesn't tell us. But God showing him kindness does resolve 
some things that people, I notice people want to wrestle these types of verses out of existence. Many people do not want the Bible in their mind to say that right there. And it's like they wrestle that out. And there are life circumstances that you and I are going to face where you will not necessarily, or other people may be offended at the way it works for you, the way God works for you. God had feeling for this guy. The Lord was with him. The Lord showed, he had literal feeling for Joseph. And I just want to give you a highlight the character of God, these seven things that make up holiness. God is light. God is love. God, there's feeling that God has for each one of us. And no matter how and where and what you find yourself in, and no matter what we face, if you will allow him to, God will field an army for you. Like I said last week, the angels of the Lord encamp around those who fear him, but... Also, not only will the Lord field things on your behalf, there's feeling and God's kindness will come through. How does that feel? God didn't cut him off. God spelled out some significant things in his life and he's like, there's no shortcomings here. The guy's in jail. It came upon him and no matter what comes upon us in this season that we're in, God will show you and me kindness if we keep our eye and our heart aimed at him. The longer a problem lasts is the problem. The thing is, is that we want a fixed solution. We want a fast way out. We want this over before it began. And this guy, he's, he's literally sold into slavery by his brothers. Bad thing, bad thing, bad thing, bad thing. And I don't want bad things. And most people don't want to fill, fill their lives with bad things. But please hear me. The Lord was with him and showed him kindness and the kindnesses that God had, my, my guess is, if you look at this scripture, he couldn't become the prince of Egypt until he had, like God's kind to you when you're the top and when you're the bottom. God's kind to you when you think it's over and when you think it's just begun. God's kindness to you is not elevated by you being elevated in the world. Joseph was elevated in the world but God's kindnesses were there and elevated him in the dungeon before the world elevated him. And I want you to know is that God sometimes elevates you before people can see what God's putting before you. Just because the world sees you elevated doesn't mean God doesn't see you. The world sometimes sees you elevated and then they applaud you and praise you. But God sees you and he is practical and his mind, his feet are on the ground and he elevates you inside of you and just because you don't squeak a compliment at somebody doesn't mean God isn't showing you favor and kindness and at some point everybody will spot it. But I want you to know you are not weak because everyone else doesn't see it. Joseph's brothers didn't see or didn't want to see that God was with them. And what got him to where he went was them selling him into slavery. But as Joseph said in a strange way, the Lord used this for good so I'm not angry at you. The position that I have that the world can see is not the reflective of the kindness that God is showing me. Can anyone say amen? And I mean, I may stink at building a tent. I have a feeling the people that are sitting in here today are often the ones that don't know how to build a good tent because otherwise you might be sitting in a good tent right now on this weekend. But I'm going to tell you something right now. It doesn't matter how good at building tents you are. After what happened yesterday, your tent was gone. And I want you to know, no matter how good you are at fixing things on earth, it's nothing compared to how good God is at fixing things from heaven. And remember what Jesus said, our Father who art in heaven, this is him teaching us how to pray, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
There are select few people that get the will of God done in their life? No, Jesus said, I'm going to teach everybody this. This is the most known prayer that Jesus taught, and it's available for every one of you and all of us. Our tents might not be left standing at the end of the storm, but that's not reflective of what God's doing in your life. Storms are not something we can manage, but favor is something God figures out. And I want you to know, when the Lord adds his kindness and his favor, and when the Lord grants you something, no matter what goes on around us, God can single you out for blessing and a stance towards you. Heaven's stance towards me is what defines my life. Please hear me. God's stance towards me is what figures out more of the things around me than me figuring them out. And God allowing his favor and putting that into me allows something in me not only that changes me, but it changes a situation that few... You know what the Bible says? It says, um, it said, many are called, but few are chosen. Well, what's the point to that? Why is it that many are called and few are chosen? What is it that Jacob did? What is it that Joseph did? What is it that these guys did? The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham. And in the New Testament, you can have this blessing. That God will favor you. That God will figure some of these things out. And you know, it used to be like, oh, that's a great little thing that you're writing. Or you're talking about in church or Paul or whatever. But nowadays, this stuff matters. Nowadays, it's really real. And I want you to know that it plays out with inside of you too. When I have this of God, when God is looking at me like this, when the Lord is with me, and when the Lord shows you kindness and me kindness, and when the Lord grants us favor, it's not that he puts us in a position where we get the particular position that we wanted. It's that we become a person that is just like, you know what, whether I get the position or not, something particular has happened to me, and no matter what I face, something of God is in me. Something has gotten into me of God that I may not be able to figure this out, but I'm in a place Though, no, though that wind may wail against me, no matter what strength of a wind comes at me, it's not going to affect the inside hidden things that God's put in there because it's the hidden things that God puts in you that makes you secure that the tent won't blow away. Jesus gives me anchors, and what it is is I have a house built on a rock that can't be moved when the storm comes down. You know, I, I, I'm not trying to be a salesman here, but like, there was this guy, I'm sure none of you remember him. His name was Vince. He was on TV, and he sold like the slap chop. I love Vince and the slap chop. I got a slap chop. Somebody gave it to me because they heard me talking about it. They thought it was so funny. And you know, it's not a sales pitch. There are secure things amongst us as believers. Did you know today that in this building there's secure things amongst you that are fixed in Jesus that no one can move? Can anyone say amen? Very quiet crowd in here today. Jesus, give me secure things that are fixed in me. The wind can blow a tree down, but the house that builds on the rock, it's going to stand. And I want to just say to you, the man who builds his life on this. So I can wield an authority, and this is the point that I just want to make as I kind of move into finishing up. What's interesting about this in the Bible is that when, this, when God builds your house like this, your house isn't just you. As a grandpa, as a grandma, as a dad, as a mom, whoever you are, with your friends, you can assert in prayer a protection over your house. Can anyone say amen? Because the Bible says, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. 
Satan, you will not have entrance into this house. Satan, you will go no further than the doorpost of this house. And I want you to know, for many of you, don't say, Satan, you will not come into my kitchen. No. A lot of us, we have one room in the house. You need to take the whole house back. You need to take the whole property back. And I feel this from the Lord right now. After that storm blew through yesterday, all the guys that live on my street, all the dads, instantly are outside picking up all the branches off their lawn. And after the last year and a half that we have had, moms and dads, grandpas and grandmas, pick up the damage and the storm when the enemy blows through, fix up your house, get all the junk off the property, and say, Satan, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord raises up a standard against him. And I'll want to tell you this as I close. We think of a flood like we think today. We control nature today. We can control rivers. But floods in those days were like that storm yesterday. When a flood hit, the enemy would just, it's like annihilate. Everything was a mess. There's mud in the floors. The house was downtrodden. Everything, when a flood would hit back in those days, they built their houses next to water. They didn't have insurance. And when the enemy came in, it meant it was a total disaster. No control. But I want you to know, the Lord simply says, I got a handle on this, but you got to get outside and start cleaning up the property. And after the last year and a half, get out there. Take the sticks off the ground. Fix up the house. Get back what the enemy has taken. Don't let the enemy litter junk all over your property and say, I couldn't control what was going on. And I, I thought maybe I hadn't heard from the Lord when all that's happening. But the Lord wants you to know that the sticks and stones will break your bones. But if you put your trust in the Lord, heaven is for you. And God can make a quick cleanup job. Call the Holy Ghost. You say, that is, well, show me that in the Bible. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord raises up a standard against him. He's coming in to clean up. He's coming in to fight back. He's coming in in every way conceivable. The enemy these days and amongst us, we have the right and the authority over our home. I push you, Satan, out of my house. I declare the blood of Jesus over the doorposts of this home. And those branches that came down out in the backyard, they're, I'm going to pick them up. I'm getting out the chainsaw. You're going down, branch. I'm making mincemeat of you, and I'm using you for a bonfire. And I want you to hear me today. Some people are like, well, I don't really like it when bad things happen, Pastor Paul. They, they overcame Satan by the word of their testimony and the blood of the Lamb. And I want you to know, we can pick ourselves up not in our own strength, but because heaven is for us. We haven't necessarily gotten ourselves here in our personal lives, what's going on in the world, but when that storm hits and everything starts going crazy, you just can get up and say, not on this property. I'm going to have a testimony. I'm going to see what God has for me to do. I was trying to juggle a bunch of things in my hands, and when the wind came, all my juggle balls just flew into the backyard but I'm going to go get those balls back, and I've got a purpose, and I'm going to put things in place. If you can hear me today, just realize this. What are the things that you need to put in place after two years of nonsense? I question whether I should say this today, but I think I will. We did a wedding yesterday that was absolutely beautiful, and a reception with no power. And I'm standing there doing a wedding, no power. And they're cooking the dinner, no power, no electrical, nothing. 
And I'm sure that it was a very unusual experience. But it was beautiful. What defines your life as beautiful is that your trust is in the Lord and the beauty of holiness comes out of you under pressure. What is the beauty of holiness? It's the seven things that God is. I can become partaker in God's light. I can become partaker in God's love. I can become partaker in his mercy and his loving kindness because he is those things. Not that he grants them, he is it. And in me, when he, the Bible says, through his glory and goodness, we can become partakers in the nature of God. That is one of the most outrageous scriptures. But I pray that when weakness, when weak times come upon you, we are not weak because of Christ in you. Because if that nature of God, it's not that it's serving me, but I can become partaker of it. I may be rattled, but in the day of adversity, when it comes, I put on the full armor of God, I will be able to take my stand in the evil day. And the Bible says I won't be able to cancel the evil day right away, but at least I'll be able to stand. And I want you to know, we are living in days that are just insane. And, and it's evil out there now. But inside of me, the gumption does not come from me. The source is through him. I don't know why I feel this. Have you ever been in a storm and you lost somebody? We just lost so-and-so. There's people here, what you need to put in place is other people. I feel that. Who has the enemy really worked on in your life? Your family, your friendships, your home. When storms come, it's usually the weakest people that don't survive. Bad ones, bad storms, not people. And in this moment, what are the names of people we need to be praying for? Can anyone right now just say amen? Who is in my heart that I'm like, God, that's in my house. My house is going to remain standing. I'm going to ask you to stand with me this morning. I want to take a minute praying. I don't want to go super long today. When the enemy comes in like a flood and everything blows around, there's garbage all over your property, who is it you need to go get back? Who do you need to raise up? And I want you to know this. God did not get even with Joseph's 11 brothers. God saved them through Joseph. And Joseph had something figured out when he said, I'm not mad at you guys. The Lord put me in this situation so I could save my family. And I want you to know, there's people that are here today, you're doing the heavy lifting, you're praying for people, and it, the world would tell you they're mean, they're whatever, they're, you should cut them off. I want you to know, God's eternal plan is you'll all make it. God's eternal plan is everybody, as a body of Christ, we don't want division, we don't want seeds of divisions. We don't want to put people in accounts and columns and this and that. We don't want to think like the world thinks right now. Even if someone is aiding and abetting and being mean to me, God's plan may be to save the whole lot of us because we believe in Jesus. So right now we lift up. Who are you lifting up? Lift them up with me right now. God, we lift up every name. Because the Bible says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess. And we lift up every possibility right now for us and for other people. Every possibility. May the supercharge of the Holy Ghost come down. May the power of the Holy Spirit come through us and you. May God position us in a way 
that we're not isolated or single or alone, but may we have value in relationships. May God make this place awesome. May we fill our homes with the presence of God, and may the position of the Holy Spirit towards us be, I'm going to raise up a standard against the enemy. <clears throat> when the enemy comes in a like a flood, Lord, we access what you have left for us in the Holy Spirit. I feel this right now. I don't know why. I really feel this. When Jesus ascended on high, he left you the Holy Ghost. He sent the Holy Spirit down when he went up. And so right now, activate who he left. Jesus, you're gone. I wish you were here. I left you the Holy Ghost. We allow right now. Just say, Holy Ghost, you're left here. You've been sent down. For us, we take you right now. We need you to help clean up our property. We need you to bring back faith in our home. We need to, you to help fight the enemy who's come in. We gather together with the Holy Spirit. Jesus sent him down so you weren't left alone. Now release him in your home. Release him in your situation. Release him in your possibilities. All things are possible for those who believe when the Holy Spirit works on our behalf. So right now, we believe everything taken from us in the last year and a half that blew down the hill in the storm, we take it back. Everything of the Lord that comes through you right now, push to the edge of your property. We push to take the whole property back. We take the land. We take every possibility. Holy Spirit, the, I feel this, the Holy Spirit will work with you to establish you in all your ways. And he will direct your paths. Lord, bless us today, even when we face a mountain. Make it a molehill. Everything you've prayed that God granted you, I pray it will last. I pray nothing will be taken from you. I pray the enemy will take no spoils. And I pray amidst us will be the shouts of victory in the camp of the Lord. May victory come and stabilize. I closed early so I could pray a bit. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I just feel one final thing in my heart as we're standing here. Joseph, his brothers all put him down. But God lifted him up. And no matter what, I feel this, there's a fight over this right here. Not in this church, but against the people here. For people that have put you down by their words, by things they've said, I, you are free in Jesus' name. We don't hate them, but God lifts you, and God's behind you, and God's authority's with you. Don't fight. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. We take the day. Even if people talked us down. Where people have talked you down, may the Lord lift you up. Where people have shouted in your face, may the wind of the Spirit blow behind your back to keep you going. Where resistance has presented itself, and where, I feel this, I don't know why I feel this. Some people, God has done something in your life, and someone said to you, they put it there, oh, it's just a common occurrence. It wasn't a common occurrence. The Lord did something in you and God provided for you. And in this place this morning, everything in the last two years, every provision you've given us, Lord, we say thanks. We thank you, Lord, for everything you've done. We thank you, Lord, for everything you'll do. We thank you that the enemy, his power is broken. 
We thank you that Satan fell from heaven and that the power of the enemy is under our feet. But Lord, we unite in our hearts, not with what people have said and what we've heard come out of people, our, their, their mouths, but we unite our hearts with what you have for us today. We unite our hearts towards heaven. We ask in a single moment that you will break things that have put us down. Break every power that speaks against us. And may our position be, I don't hate anybody, but I want to see the purpose and the plan of the Lord come to pass. I am not going to receive what that was said. I'm going to go forward in the name of the Lord. And I will not do it in my own strength, but I'll do it in the anointing and the power that Jesus has sent me in you. In Jesus' name. Come, Lord Jesus. Oh, I feel that you have value. Your marriage has value. You and your fiancé have value. The plans of God has value for your life. Everything the Lord has spoken about you has value. And we need to have, put our heads up high, not in pride, but tilt our heads towards the Lord so we can look right at us. Lord Jesus, I'm proud of what you've called me to do. Lord Jesus, you have plans for me, and you haven't abandoned me. No one in this building is abandoned in this life right now. Jesus is with us. The Holy Ghost has come down, and the glory of God will shine and reign in the midst of his enemies. May God arise and his enemies be scattered to the seven corners of the world in your life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you today. Amen. us today we hope the worship and the message was of a blessing to you we pray that you have a blessed rest of your sunday and a great week ahead bye